Hey there everyone, it's your favorite Ice Prince, John Creighton Peterson, and I'm here in my studio to share with you a great technique using ice resin for finishing off your bezels. Using this technique is great because it finishes off your front and your back side so you always have that nice polished look. Well enough jibber jabber, let me get started and show you how to complete your next project. So I wanted to show you what this project looks like complete, the one that I'm going to be working on today. And I'm not going to be showing you how to fill in the bezel with all your tchotchkes and accoutrements. I'm going to only be showing you how to get that nice resin finish on the back side and on the sides of your bezel. This also includes your front edge as well. And this is a two-step process, so you have to make sure that you're planning accordingly when you're working on your bezel. Now we have a few basic supplies to go over real quick before I show you how to get started. First is, a nice craft mat always comes in handy. This one's from Imagine Crafts, and it's great for picking up that spilt resin, because you all know it happens every now and then. And then you can see that on my bezel, this is one of the large rectangular uh, hop nail bezels, I've already covered this with my Iced Enamels Relic Powder, and I absolutely love, love, love this color. Did I say I love this color? And I've covered my back, my sides, and also my front and my inside lip, and I just like to always do that just for that nice finished Virgo look because I am kind of anal retentive about things like that. So, the only other supplies you need are your high-tech brushes that you can get here at Ice Resin, along with your resin and the magic stirring tool, otherwise known as a popsicle stick. And I've already preset my resin. A little trick that I like to do is that I have these little wood pieces, and I like to put this down just like that, and then I'll put my bezel up on top of this. The reason why I do that, it's elevating it up, but this is also gonna give me a nice working surface. And in case I have any little drips, not that a perfectionist would, haha, that way it'll drip down and I can catch them. And when you're doing this technique, I like to do the back first, and then you can also get the sides as well. Now I've picked up some resin with my stick, and I'm just putting this in the middle, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this right up to the outside edge, and you can see how I'm just there at the edge, and it's going to spring back. That all has to do with your surface tension, and you know, if I wasn't a chatty Cathy in physics class in high school, I could tell you the real scientific reason why. So again, I'm just pulling up and releasing. So I'm going to continue adding my resin onto the back side. Again, I'm not pouring it out of the cup. I just found that if I pour out of the cup, I always put too much resin on, and I end up with Niagara Falls coming over the side, as I like to describe it to people. And when you're coating on the back side, remember you're doing this as a layer. This is not setting a bezel. So you're not adding a two inch layer of resin on the here in one pour. You're just wanting a nice, even coat. And it's at this time also that if you want to add some embellishments onto the back side, you can. So now I'm going to use my trusty brush here. And I'm going to slowly just start to coat on my sides. Again, remember, these are thin coats that you're doing. I'm going to pick this up to show you. And I'm going to put this on, hopefully without dropping it while I'm on the camera. And I shouldn't have tipped this because it's now going off the other side of the bezel. So always remember, keep this level. You might find it easier to start with the sides of your bezel. I find it a little bit cumbersome, so I've always found that this way works best for me. So I'm just gonna work my way around the bezel. And when you're doing your sides, one thing to keep in mind also is that you have two chances to coat this. Because now that I have this 
see the resin on there nice and shiny we love that jewelers grade shine once you have this all set we're just gonna sit and be patient and let this cure on the back side and along our sides now that I've let my bezel completely cure on the back side and tap it so you can see I'm not getting any wet finger from doing that. My bezel is all set with that beautiful jewelry grade shine on the back and on the sides as well. Now, if you did happen to notice that you missed a little spot on the side, again, you can take one of your little blocks and prop this up. Now, definitely on this side, you want to do your sides first. And if you want to also get your rings on the end, you want to make sure you do that this time. So what I would do is just start painting the sides of my bezel. Again, just nice thin coats, don't need a lot. And then going to fill in my bezel just like usual and then let it fully cure. Now I just want to take a moment to show you a few finished samples using this great technique. And you might find that if you're really hard on your bezels or your jewelry when you're wearing it, that you might want to put an extra coat on the sides and just make sure that you're getting that nice protective layer on there. So this was the steampunk inspired one that I showed you earlier. This is another piece that I did for the blog. And you see it has that nice finish on the back and on the sides as well. And last but not least, we have this nice little shield one. And here's an example of what I was talking about, that you can add some of the glitter into the back. I hope this video tutorial helps you on your next ice resin project. And as always, if you need some more inspiration or great project tips and ideas, you can always stop by the ice resin blog.